What's up guys, Aiden here at Salon Landscaping. Welcome back to another video. Today in this video, we are on a rock job, as you can see here. Got some nice one inch going in over here. And real sharp. Got my guy Garrett. You all know him. The man of myth the legend. Always out here getting it done, crushing it. Anyway guys, I got a pretty sick little sequence for you of us uh, doing this job. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and roll that sequence. Well guys, since this video was kind of short, I didn't get to film as much as I did on the job because I was mainly focused on making that super sick sequence you guys saw. Hopefully you really enjoyed that. I enjoyed making it, enjoyed filming it, and uh, I know my buddy Garrett did uh, help like being in the videos, like helping out. So that was really, really awesome. Anyway, I wanted to talk about for a minute how we do or how we complete a job like this. This isn't something that's typically done very easily. I mean, it, it's easy if you know how to do it right. So. I'm not saying I do it like perfectly, you know, there's no really right way, it's really how you do it best, but I figured I'd go through the process and show you or tell you more about how I do it. So part one or step one is um, bed prep. So what you want to do, weed, edge, trim. So what I mean by that is you're going to trim all the plants in the beds, weed the beds, and edge them with a spade, dig down, get your flat spade, whatever you use, whatever your edging technique, edge those beds out. Weed whack them when you're done, keep them nice and sharp, make sure all the weeds are out, and make sure the beds are trimmed. An optional step in the bed prep would be go ahead and spray those beds with Roundup, just don't hit the plants, and uh, then you'll know everything's dead. And then also make sure you get those bushes pruned up before we do that, because everything looks nice once the bushes are pruned. Then part two of your prep work would be your fabric and your metal edge. Because we are doing a rock in there you want to keep that separation between the dirt and the rocks because you don't want those to blend together and cause them to get together and the rocks sink and stuff like that it just won't look the greatest so you want to come in with your woven non-woven whatever you use fabric pin that down make sure you give those plants plenty of space to breathe you don't want to choke up too close on those plants because you know it just can be bad for the plants so don't bring that fabric up too close on the plants you may have to weed around the plants every once in a while occasionally but obviously that's not a problem then you want to go ahead and install your metal edge because you're putting rocks in it won't be too easy to edge that bed um, in the spring and fall whenever you edge your beds because there'll be rocks you'll be just kicking dirt up in the rocks so you want to do a metal edge so that edge holds and that would be part two you're finished all your prep work so the next step would be the installation of your rocks so you're going to bring in those rocks and install them at a depth so you can't see the fabric underneath you don't want to see that fabric uh, just because it doesn't look uh, very appealing and you just want it to look as best as possible so making sure that that fabric isn't able to be seen is perfect too so I use a decorative stone so you want to make sure you rinse that stone when you're done because you'll bring out the true color in the stone and that will be best for you for the client, for the pictures you take, because it'll look its best. Now right here, real quick, I wanted to just show you a couple tips I found that worked best when you're doing projects like this. Uh, just things to watch out for like that. When you see a client who's looking for mulching, look out for them in the best interest of their property. If they're having moisture issues up against the house, they've noticed water in their basement, this is a great solution because rock won't hold the moisture nearly as long as mulch. For example, down here, uh, it rained a couple days ago in these mulch beds, but as you can see, that mulch is focus. You can see that mulch is still 
really, really wet. It's got that real dark color to it, so you can tell it's uh, really wet. So that's, that's uh, not good for the foundation if it's too close up on your house. Um, you also need to watch out that for every one yard of mulch that you'd need for this property, you're gonna need about a ton and a half of stone because you're laying it thicker. You don't wanna see that fabric underneath. You need to make sure that you can't see it, so you need a budget for that extra material. So another thing you wanna watch out for is rock is a lot heavier than mulch. Actually, mulch weighs about four to 600 pounds per yard, whereas rock per ton is 2,000 pounds. So be ready for the more weight, whichever way you choose, whether that's a wheelbarrow, cart mate, or maybe a Toro Dingo, whatever way you choose to move that stone, be ready, because it's heavier. Also, rock, in most cases, decorative stone, costs about three to four times the cost of mulch. So mulch around here goes for about 25 to $35 a yard, depending on where you get it. And good decorative stone, not like a number 57 stone, goes from about 70 to $90 a ton. 57 stones used more for drainage, and that goes for about 30 to 50 a ton. But obviously for decorative stone, we use a, a Delaware River stone. We either get that in a three quarter inch size, a one inch size, one to three inch, or three to five inch, and they may even have a five to seven, but they got all different sizes for your needs. Typically I go with a one inch in the beds, or a one to three, it looks the best. And for like a, a little like column, like a, a dry stream, we'll go with more like a three to five or a five to seven. Um, also with rock jobs, rock takes more time to move, so budget more time. I've made that mistake, been there, done that way too many times, so make sure you budget extra time when you're moving that rock around because it takes more time. Like we dumped the wheelbarrow, we hit the curb, went up the curb and then hit the grass and we dumped the wheelbarrow out. So that's just a little two minute setback to clean that back up. So I don't know, if you're there for a day, budget an extra two hours or do something like that. Other than that, that's, that's pretty much the basics of it. If I missed anything, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought about it. But other than that, if you guys have any other questions, leave them in the box down below. But with that, I'm Aiden from Maison Landscaping. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.